This is Christian Questions. Galileo once said, You cannot teach a person anything. You can only help them find it within themselves. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Christian Questions Talk Radio with a Purpose with Jonathan and Rick. We're here to discuss with you, our listeners, thought-provoking and meaningful topics based on the Bible. It's a call-in format. We're caller-friendly, and we look forward to hearing your point of view. As always, our perspective is this. We believe that there is one God, and through Him, there is one truth which is found in the Bible. Our purpose is to stir your thinking up along with ours as we continually search for clarity and understanding this one truth. Well, we are not here to teach. We are here to seriously provoke your thinking according to Hebrews 10.24, which is a theme for our program. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and good works. This provoking is encouraged by Isaiah 1.18. Come now and let us reason together. Now this week, Jonathan, where are we going? All right, our question is, should it be Israel or Palestine? And our theme text is found in Genesis chapter 13, verses 14 through 15. And the Lord said to Abram, after Lot had separated from him, Lift your eyes now and look from the place where you are, northward, southward, eastward, and westward. For all the land which you see I give to you and your descendants forever. All right. Our world, Jonathan, is full of controversy. There are controversies over politics, equal rights, taxation, economic principles, global warming, and the right to life, just to name a few. Amongst the most noted and longest lasting controversies of our day is the controversy over Israel, the Palestinians, and the land that they both live on. Think about it. In an oil-rich region where there are over 220 million Arabs residing, One of the greatest worldwide attention-getters is the tiny sliver of land called Israel, a land of no oil to speak of, six million Jews, and about a million Arabs swirling around this tiny land that's about the size of New Jersey are questions about who has a right to claim the land as their own and who doesn't. Folks, stay with us this morning as we look into this question from a biblical, historical, and present-day perspective, should it be Israel or Palestine? And Jonathan, to get this conversation in the right place, we have with us a very, very, very special guest. Yes, we do. We have Ken Rawson with us this morning. Good morning, Ken. How are you? Uh, good morning. Very well. It's good to be here. And uh, Ken, we, uh, before we get started with this, we just want to, why are you here? Who are you? <laughs> Where do you come from? What do you do? Tell us. <laughs> Uh, okay, I don't like to talk about myself very much, but uh, I am a uh, <clears throat> Christian minister. Also, I have traveled to Israel extensively. I've produced uh, several uh, DVDs uh, about Israel and its history and its biblical rights, as well as its historic rights. And whenever I go to Israel, I have uh, meetings with uh, government officials, uh, prime ministers, members of the Knesset, which is uh, comparable to what we would call the uh, <coughs> Congress, and also cabinet members of the uh, prime ministers, various prime ministers at any given time. I had uh, one of my first prime minister meetings was with Yashak Rabin, who actually started the Oslo a peace process, and everybody thinks of him as a left-winger, which he was politically, but also a compromiser on the land. But the bottom line as far as his land compromise was this. A month before he was assassinated, he says, as far as Jerusalem is concerned, it will be undivided. Uh, The Palestinians will have no part of East Jerusalem, which is the biblical Jerusalem. And he said, there will be no Palestinian state. There will be an autonomous Palestinian entity, but not a government that would have national relationships and international relationships with other governments, and it would not have an army. I also uh, was involved with Menachem Begin. And he was the uh, next to the most right-wing prime minister. And he was uh, very appreciative of a book that I wrote on Israel. 
and we did have contact back and forth. Uh, Bibi Netanyahu, I always tell him he should change his name. <laughs> <laughs> we shared the platform, the first uh, contact I had with him, we shared the platform uh, at a uh, large public event uh, at the La Rome Hotel in Jerusalem. There were over 1,200 present. They were coming down the stairway to the basement where the ballroom was so fast that uh, for a while management had to close down the stairway. Uh, the room was packed, uh, standing room only right up against the back doors. And uh, I had the first part of the presentation, and uh, Bibi Netanyahu had the second. And then I meet with ca uh, cabinet members and Knesset members. Uh, Benny Begin is uh, one of the Knesset members uh, that I uh, had great respect for. He is now in Netanyahu's uh, cabinet, and he's a member of the Knesset. Uh, Benny Begin made quite a statement. He said there is only one people whose boundaries are given in a book. He says that people is the Jewish people, and that book is the Bible, uh, which is very true. Then I have, uh, over the years, written many newspaper op-ed uh, articles that appeared in papers across the United States, and I think I'll stop there.